Welcome to Project Me, the podcast. I'm your host, Tiffany Carter, the founder of Project Me, multimillionaire entrepreneur, former TV newscaster, money-making expert, female empowerment speaker, and self-proclaimed office supply addict. My mission is to take the mystery out of making big money. Every week on Project Me, the podcast, I'll share success tips, strategies, and stories from other entrepreneurs, experts, and millionaires, showing you exactly how you can achieve your most exceptional life. Now let's get to it. Exciting announcement for all of my listeners. I've officially opened my exclusive group, the Project Me Passive Income Posse, to the public. This group is by application only, so we can keep the group high vibe and spend our time, energy, and expertise only helping those of you who truly want massive success and impact. You get live weekly trainings from me, special guest coaches, and direct access to me and my business partner for all of your questions. To learn more and apply, go to projectmewithtiffany.com, click on work with me and select Project Me Posse. And of course, any questions, feel free to DM me at Project Me with Tiffany. Welcome to the podcast and posse Project Me with Tiffany Carter. I'm your host, Tiffany, and you are going to hear the things I wish I knew in my first five years of being an entrepreneur that no one effing told me. And I even had entrepreneurs in my life. I mean, my father had already passed away and he was an entrepreneur, so I can't blame him. My mom, entrepreneur, never told me any of this shit, but are we really surprised for those who've listened to (laughs) my other episodes featuring Momsy? And I had quite a few clients entrepreneurs. I had some other friends, entrepreneurs. It's like, why is no one sharing all this shit? And you know what? I have to start out by saying this on a little rant, but it's actually a blessing no one told me because that's where, you know, fast forward 11 years, Project Me with Tiffany Carter was born because I saw a hole in the coaching market, in the business consulting market, where no one is sharing the real stuff. They're showing highlights. Maybe they'll like claim they're, you know, overworked or taking a sabbatical from social media for a week. You know, they might say that, but they don't really get in the nitty gritty of what it takes to scale your business, what it looks like behind the scenes. And it leaves a lot of people having false or incorrect expectations And also, it makes people feel who are already doing it, like many of you listening, whether you're side hustling, you're already full time entrepreneur, no matter what level you're at, kind of feeling alone or like you're doing it wrong, or maybe you shouldn't be doing it at all, because all these other people are making it look a fuck of a lot easier. They're just not telling you. I know that for a fact now. Years of years of my own time owning two businesses now, and also in coaching thousands of people, um, quite a few of them high level. Yeah, behind the scenes, it's a hot mess, by the way, you guys, everybody's a hot mess. All right, things I wish I knew. I guess we'll start with that first one I just said. Behind the scenes, every entrepreneur is a hot mess at some point, all of them especially the ones that portray like life is easy breezy and my makeup's always done and I go to Pilates, you know, every day and then I go and meet a friend for coffee and maybe I like type an email or two and I just make hundreds of thousands of dollars doing that, especially those people are a hot mess behind the scenes. Anyone who's portraying something to be that effortless and easy breezy, um, no. No. That's not how it works. All entrepreneurs of any level, all the people on the Shark Tank, my own coach who's worth $100 million and is in his 70s now and has been an entrepreneur his entire life, he has his hot mess moments behind the scenes, right? And over time, you know, you those moments are 
um, lesson to some degree, but you also start taking bigger risks, which leads to those those other hot mess moments end up being like full meltdowns versus a lot of just like stressed out days. I'm talking like I've been on the floor in a fetal position before. It would have been nice to know that, especially in that first five years of being an entrepreneur, that it's hard as hell. And there's more days that suck than days that are great. I would have felt a lot less alone. And I wouldn't have felt like uh, maybe I wasn't cut out for doing this if I knew that that was normal. So I have to start out with that one. All right. Next one is, oh, whoops, those are my wrong notes. That's for another show. I was like going to go into a whole thing and you guys would have been like, what the hell is she talking about? Okay. So I wish someone had said to me this, which is make sure that you pretend 50% of what you make doesn't exist. And I'm being serious. It's not sexy. It's not what anyone wants to hear. Everyone, no one wants to hear that, which is why no one fucking tells you that. But I don't care. I'm going to tell you that because I wish someone told me. So let's just give an example, like an easy number. Um, so let's say I was at $10,000 a month of revenue money coming in, right? And I was like, mom is a baller. You know, you look at my bank account. I'm like, I'm in business. I'm in business. Oh, my God, look how amazing I am. And then I learned when you own a business, you have to pay quarterly tax estimates, at least here in the United States. And then on top of that, you have to pay your personal taxes once a year. And things are taxed differently at different income brackets and different types of income you receive from different states and countries, etc. I won't get too geeky with you about it. But the easiest thing you can do is 50%. It doesn't exist. If I did that, I wouldn't have ran into a tax problem come tax time. And I was told that I owed some crazy ass number. And I didn't have the money. And I'm not someone who's an overspender. I like nice things, but I am, you know, raised in the Midwest. I'm pretty conservative. If I don't have the money for like luxury things, I don't buy them. Um, I've always owned properties that I've lived in that were like be below my means, meaning I don't, you know, put myself up against it just to have, you know, a nicer house. And I didn't have the money to pay my taxes. I actually had to go to Momsy. And I've never asked her for money like that. And I had to ask her because if I didn't, I knew I was going to be in the hole. So I had to take a momsy loan. Um, yeah, so that was fun. I didn't want to do that again. So I'm letting you guys know 50% doesn't exist. All right. It'll be terrifying. And it will test every single part of your being when you have a business. It brings up all of your shit your limiting beliefs, your limiting behaviors. It'll also show your um, positive traits and your um, positive qualities as well will come out. But those aren't really painful, right? Those are exciting where you're like, I'm amazing, right? Or I'm so resilient, I can do anything. Those come out too. But it tests every fiber. You have to have conversations with yourself. There's a lot of doubt. There's a lot of tears. There's a lot of anxiety. I had sleepless nights. But what would have helped me is if I had someone who I respected and trusted, you know, a fellow female entrepreneur, even a male entrepreneur would have been fine, telling me, Tiffany, this is going to be terrifying, exhilarating, nerve wracking all of the emotions over and over again. And they can all run the whole gamut of all different emotions will all happen sometimes all in one day. And you'll I'll be questioning yourself, why am I doing this to myself? This was so much easier just having a regular job. And you will uh, even question your sanity at some points. Then at least when all that stuff came up for me, I would have been like, okay, this is normal. Other people go through this versus me thinking maybe I'm not cut out to be an entrepreneur. It is a scary ass shit show. 
And I'm not saying that to deter you from going after your dreams or taking your side hustle into full time. You just need to know what you're getting into. And if you're like, Tiffany, I'm not someone who has that in me. I don't have it in me. And that catch, right? Like I always teach you guys, there's a catch to everything. That catch to being an entrepreneur and having all those emotions and those things come up and being scared and unsure and anxiety and what the hell am I doing? I I can't handle that. That's okay. That's okay. I'm not judging you then you know you can't handle it, then you should not have your own business, right? You can do network marketing on the side, you can do affiliate marketing on the side, you can just continue to grow your audience and then maybe sell, you know, some products on there while keeping your regular job. That's okay. But you've got to be honest with yourself. Um, If someone told me what a crazy ride it would be, it would not have stopped me from doing it. But I would have at least not been so shocked when all those emotions came up and I truly thought I was losing my damn mind. Um, That would have been nice. Okay, here's the other thing. I didn't hire anyone to help guide me until five years in. I am a stubborn Virgo that is in self-will. And I was also raised by a mom who's an entrepreneur where she had lots of employees, but she didn't ask for guided help from someone who was further along than herself. She didn't have a paid mentor. She didn't even have a unpaid, an unpaid mentor. So I thought that in order for me to prove, right, that I know what I'm doing, I'm successful, like I'm really making it, that I had to figure it out on my own and there was some kind of badge of honor No, it's a badge of insanity. I waited until I literally almost quit everything. And you guys, I was at like 250, 275, 300, 325 a year when I almost quit everything. It had nothing to do with how much money I was making. It was, I didn't know what I was doing. I felt alone. There wasn't a great plan. I knew how to make money and serve my clients and have sales. I was exhausted. I was trading time for money. I was working 12 hours a day, seven days a week. I was like, oh my God, you know, I'm liking this money, but I don't have a life. So what's the point if you don't have a life? Like, I don't get it. I don't want to do this. This is, I was raised by someone who did that and it doesn't look fun. Um, So there you go. I would have hired a business coach way sooner. And some of you can roll your eyes right now like, well, of course you're adding this in here, Tiffany, because you're a top business coach. I'm adding it in here because it's something I wish I did sooner. You can you can take it or leave anything I say. But if you're a listener and a follower of mine, you know I don't bullshit because I don't have time for that. And I don't actually need to be doing any of this because I have another business and enough passive income that this is something I'm doing as my way of giving back and making a shit ton of money while giving back. I just want you guys to think about the fact that you can pay someone who shaves off tons of time, aggravation, expensive mistakes, stupid mistakes that I made by paying someone, which in turn, over several years, you end up making all that money you've spent on your coach back in savings from saving, you know, mistakes or doing business strategy that yields more money. I went, that's how I went from multiple six figures to seven figures. I'm telling you, I could not have done it without having the right coach. Why would I have known how to do that? You don't just like happen to fall into entrepreneurship. Okay, like Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook. Yes, he knew how to code. Um, He really didn't know how to market. Um, He did know how to present his platform and explain what it was and that kind of thing. No, he hired people who were experts at marketing, at finance, at, you know, at getting um, at raising funds. Right. He hired those people that he didn't just happen upon the Facebook that it is today. So I want you guys to think about that. It's I had that it was small minded thinking. I was not thinking like a true business owner and CEO. I was just thinking like a side hustler. 
That's that's what I was looking at it like. And if you're trading time for money like that, and you're not sure how to get to a level where you're not doing that, don't guess, invest. It makes no sense. I was I was insane. So I wish someone told me that because I would have done it way sooner, made a lot more money sooner, but really more important than money. I can't get that time back, you guys. I can't get that time back. I'm not joking. 12 hours a day, sometimes 14, seven days a week. I had a lot of relationships, even the good ones that didn't work out because all I was doing was working. And when I wasn't working, I was exhausted. It affected my health. I can't get any of that time back. You know, money you can make. Money is actually really easy to make. But we can't get time back and we can't get the quality of that time back. That's why I'm emphasizing this so much. Here's another thing. You will make mistakes. You will mess up. You will make some big ones. You will make some small ones. You will make mistakes out of subconscious self-sabotage that you aren't even aware of that you're doing, but they present themselves as a mistake. But it's really your fear in disguise and you actually drop the ball somewhere. And it's a form of self-sabotage as you're up leveling. It would have made me feel it would make have made me feel a lot better knowing that I am going to make mistakes because that perfectionistic side of me, I would have at least known, okay, like I'm still worthy of having this business. I'm still a good business person. I still have the capability of, you know, having a successful business and being an entrepreneur, even though I make mistakes, right? And it would have saved me a lot of pain and anguish and embarrassment. I mean, I've I've messed up things with clients. I've messed up things in my own systems. I mean, I've done most of the mistakes you could possibly make. Um, and it was very embarrassing. And I would end up beating myself up for weeks over it because I didn't know other people made all these mistakes because no one fucking talks about this stuff. That's why I'm telling you. I made mistakes still. I just make a lot fewer mistakes because of all my years of experience, and I do my best to not repeat mistakes. But you know, we all have blind spots, and things are going to happen and things repeat themselves to get our attention to go, hey, you know, you've not healed this part of yourself, you've not dealt with this part of yourself before. So there you go with that. Do with that as you please. All right. And here is something that probably is One of the most important things that I wish someone told me is get an accountant who is experienced in working with entrepreneurs who are at your level, not entrepreneurs. That's vague, right? I mean, okay, like, you know, Jeff Bezos is an entrepreneur, right? Elon Musk is an entrepreneur. Make sure you get an accountant who is experienced in working with entrepreneurs at whatever level you are. Are you a startup? Are you a network marketer? Are you five years in and you're making 500000 a year? Um, are you selling a lot of e-products? Do you have a physical brick and mortar location? Are you someone who has an online jewelry store where you have inventory? So not all accountants are created equal. So make sure you find someone who is experienced in working with people at your level. Therefore, they know what you need to know, what would be helpful in order for you to get to the next level. That's really important that you make sure you know that. I I now have an amazing CPA who is also paid as my business manager and this is this was one of the pieces of advice from my coach that I be- before I had an accountant wasn't a bad guy I just thought an accountant was an accountant I didn't know and he really wasn't experienced in working with small business owners in their first five years of business. So I left a lot of money on the table that I could have saved and retained on taxes because he wasn't really experienced. I mean, you can't know every single part of tax law. 
it's not possible. Just like lawyers, there's lawyers in different specialties, there's accountants in different specialties. So a general accountant is not going to cut it like an H&R block situation is not going to cut it. You're going to pay a little more money, but it's worth it. Number one, what you pay for your tax person is a tax write off in of itself. Number two, someone who is good, they save you money. So you are very pleased in having to pay them what you pay them because they have saved you more than what you have to uh, pay them for, if that makes sense. And I would have not run into this this situation of going, oh my God, I'm busting my ass and I've not made anything. And now I'm in the hole because I have to pay some crazy ass tax bill. All someone would have had to have told me is all that money coming in is not yours. Pretend 50% of it doesn't exist. That's all that that would have been great. I was looking at it like fantasy thinking, like maybe I'll have to, you know, 20%, you know, 20% doesn't exist. Um, and I was just, I don't know. I don't even know where I came up with it. I think it was because I was an employee before. And I was just trying to do some math in my head. It wasn't an educated guess. And plus, who wants to really think that 50% of what you're busting your butt for isn't yours? That doesn't really feel good. But you know what? I'd rather deal with hashtag facts than hashtag lies that we tell ourselves because you end up paying a big consequence for that. All right, you guys need to tell you this. If you are not making the money that you know you deserve and desire, and you're not sure what's holding you back, you're not sure why you take three steps ahead, five steps back, my team and I created this amazing free quiz for you that'll help you uncover some of the reasons why you're not making what you want to be making. All you have to do is go to projectmewithtiffany.com and right at the top of the page, it says free quiz. So projectmewithtiffany.com. Dot com right at the top of the page it says free quiz take it share your results tag me in it and let me know what you think if you guys love this episode feel free to share it on social media share it with you know a boss babe friend or a boss dude friend of yours that you know could really benefit hearing what a multimillionaire is saying they wish they knew in their first five years of business. Um, if I had access to anything, any document, any book, podcast, video that was titled this, I would have put I would have had it sitting right next to my desk and replayed it even for a reminder. So I hope you guys love this episode. Let me know, share it on social media, tag me at Project Me with Tiffany, and I'll talk to you guys in the DMs. Bye. If you enjoyed this podcast, please write a five star review on iTunes. Not only will this make me super happy, but it will allow more listeners to find our special show. Simply help me help others.